My name is Nicholas Kastravi and I'm the BIM and Digital Lead at Snowy Hydro for Snowy 2.0. My role is to ensure and unlock value of BIM and Digital in all aspects for Snowy Hydro. Today, I'll be presenting with Seth Gorey. Seth and I have been collaborating together on various digital initiatives on Snowy 2.0 and have found a common thread. How can what we develop today on Snowy 2 build a better way of managing, communicating, and supporting the future of infrastructure at Snowy and beyond. Presenting with Seth is also an avenue I want to demonstrate to you, the industry, that working together, no matter if you are a contractor or a consultant, is how we can propel and deliver on phenomenal digital, geospatial and survey initiatives. What we do as geospatial and survey professionals is now beyond the backroom server rooms of an IT department. It is the face of every mega project in Australia and our region today. Seth, take it away. As we start to position GIS as part of the digital twin discourse, it is important for us to reflect on the past to inform our interconnected digital futures. For decades, location has formed a foundational aspect to our physical and natural environments. Whether it be recording stream flows in a field notebook or plotting these records to identify trends over time. Many of these processes from last century remain relevant this century, albeit technology has enabled us to transition from paper to tablets on projects today. Beyond processes, it is evident in our project and infrastructure history that technology has been a catalyst for innovation. I'm sure you can all agree with me that these examples of a remote submarine used for asset management as well as the analog dashboard reporting safety incidents on the original snowy scheme were truly world leading at the time. So what if I told you we have been twinning in our cities and regions for more than 70 years? Here are some examples of physical models produced for the original snowy scheme, including an analog project in a box. We can learn a lot from these analog twins of last century as we begin to use digital technology to inform our projects and infrastructure this century. So let's now hear how Snowy Hydro is progressing on their adoption of digital. Nick. So this is our Snowy Digital Spectrum. This is a concept that I pulled together to communicate to non-geospatial and survey professionals on the project on what is digital, what is geospatial, what is survey, and how does it all come together? And I've described it as a digital spectrum that all interwoven together. So data that we capture or create or display in a geospatial way, we can actually use for communication with the community. We can also connect it to the BIM models, but also from a survey side, we can actually capture and integrate back into BIM geospatial as well. And another element is, is that it can also integrate into what digital asset management could look like in the future. So I really use this tool to communicate to, to others, what does data mean? What does geospatial survey BIM data mean for not just that individual discipline, but how does it connect to every other discipline on the project as well? So Snowy Hydro. Snowy Hydro is a dynamic energy company underpinning Australia's transition to renewable energy. Snowy Hydro has grown into the fourth largest retailer into the national energy market, becoming a leader and innovator in renewable energy. Snowy Hydro owns and operates the Snowy Mountains Hydroelectric Scheme, along with other gas and diesel assets in New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia. Snowy Hydro also owns the electric and gas retail company, Red Energy, Luma Energy and Direct Connect, which supply electricity and gas to more than 1 million homes and businesses. Here are some quick facts about the Snowy Scheme and Snowy 2.0. The Snowy Scheme has 15 power stations, nine hydro, three diesel, three gas, plus one pumping station, um, two met three, and has a maximum capacity of over 5,000 megawatts across New South Wales, Victoria, and South Australia. Snowy 2.0 commenced in 2019 and ex is expected to be completed in 2026 and its first expected generation of electricity is in 2025. Also, there are over 25 kilometres of tunnels within inside the Snowy 2 project. 
The Snowy 2 project, which is currently under construction, is a major expansion of the Snowy scheme, linking Tantangra and Talbingo reservoirs with tunnels and an underground pumped hydro station about 800 metres below the surface. The Snowy 2 power station will house six reversible pump turbines and motor generator units. Three will be synchronous, so at a fixed speed, and three will be asynchronous at a variable speed. Hydropower will be generated by falling water, spinning Snowy 2.0's giant reversible turbines, which can also pump the water in the opposite direction. Snowy 2.0 will provide on-demand energy generation and large-scale energy storage, increasing the generation capacity of the Snowy scheme by almost 50%. It'll deliver an additional 175 hours of energy storage available to the national energy market, enough to power 3 million homes over the course of a week. Now onto the fun stuff. This is our tunnel tracker application. This is connected to TPC TunnelSoft, which is the software that is actually within inside the tunnel boring machines. This application that we developed started off with us trying to find if we could extract location-based information from TPC. And then we pushed it into our Esri environment. Esri is our primary GIS package within Snowy Hydro. With putting this simple dot on a map of where the tunnel boring machine was, it really excited people. It meant that we didn't need to go out onto the site or log into a highly technical piece of kit, which is TunnelSoft. It actually became overnight when we developed this dashboard, one of the most hit applications on the project, but also within inside Snowy Hydro. So it was really exciting when we had it up, we could you know, play around with some of the, the numbers and just communicate what was actually happening out on site at any time. One of the executives on the project said, I didn't even know I needed something like this. So keep doing it. So this actually started off with just a simple map and we've just kept adding to it and adding to it, including the other tunnel boring machines. I just wanted to reiterate here is that not everyone has access to TPC. TPC is a predominantly used by engineering tunnel specialists. So be able to take what we need from that application and make it simple. It also meant that people that are not tunnel engineers could access this data and information in a way that was more palatable to them. So this was really exciting. As I said, it started off as a dot on a map and it's really launched into one of the biggest dashboards that we use on the project today. Thanks, Nick. Many of the challenges Snowy 2.0 face are really no dissimilar to the original Snowy scheme, best conveyed by the supply drop, physical supply drop from the 1960s. The project and asset locations are remote, very remote. Accessing sites can be a lengthy journey in the best of times. Add poor weather and recent COVID-19 restrictions to the mix and traditional site visits are just impossible or difficult at best. The combination of these factors highlighted the need to develop a solution for the Snowy 2.0 project to enable internal and external stakeholders to virtually parachute, if you will, into the site. Today, we want to take you on a behind the scenes look at the recently launched Snowy 2.0 virtual tour, developed to address the previously mentioned challenges. We encourage you all to use the code on screen to access the tour yourselves from your mobile device. So how did we get to the virtual tour? First and foremost, we started with the end in mind, which we can appreciate is not your typical pattern. There are some important considerations when thinking about how users will access your application or solution. For example, um, most people nowadays will access applications via a mobile device, as you have all done just now by the QR code. Developing designs early can help reduce costly rework later and means other teams can also reuse the digital assets that are produced by the design team during the build phase later in our steps. Nick, how was your experience engaging with one of our UI designers on this virtual tour? That this was probably the best part of the process, not only engaging with um, someone that has a more of a design lens, but what it meant is that we could actually visualize the end product 
before it was even developed. Usually when you want to develop an application internally or externally, you start building the application straight away. We're here, we didn't even go into how it could work inside ArcGIS Online, how it would work with our existing infrastructure. It was just, what do we want? How do we want to, and then the next question is, how do we want to get there? It also meant that my stakeholders with inside Snowy Hydro and Snowy 2.0, which was the communications team, could actually see what we were developing, what it actually was, what is an application that has um, location as its um, backing. So this experience with the user experience was really, really foundational. And it also just made the whole process a whole lot quicker. Awesome. Thanks for sharing those insights, Nick. So the next step in these steps for success is to identify and reuse, importantly, your GIS, CAD, and BIM data you have available, as well as any content from other teams, such as the marketing and communications team that Nick just mentioned. Here are a couple of examples from the internal version of the tour, in fact. Up on the top right, we can see a 360 panorama processed and shared by a site scan for ArcGIS. While on the bottom, we can actually see that underground pumped hydro power station Nick mentioned earlier, imported to ArcGIS Pro in native BIM format. We then encourage you to just start by using some of the built-in capabilities Nick mentioned before that Snowy Hydro have leveraged themselves inside of the ArcGIS Enterprise portal, such as the commonly used scene viewer illustrated on screen here. For the tour, this involved configuring layers, scale dependencies, as well as creating slides that would depict the view appropriate for each stop in our tour. Before thinking about a production solution, it is important to think about what capabilities some of the configurable off-the-shelf or COTS-based solutions might offer you. There are many examples of instant apps available today, each offering a template and tool to bring self-service capabilities to you and your users. On the top right, we can see this depicted in the internal version, where we've utilized the profile widget to connect 2D CAD information for Ravine Road to really convey the elevation profile down to Lobs Hole. It definitely looks quite steep. Whereas below we have the native BIM data we saw previously, the import step. Here we can enable users to explore and reuse BIM models in geographic context within the GIS or via a web-based application. Lastly, and it is important but often overlooked step, is that when we launch and deploy our production version of a solution such as the virtual tour, is to make sure you are tracking the users, including where they are coming from to your, your solution, but also within the application, how are they utilizing it? This is really important for potential future enhancements or requests to prioritize those enhancements that might come from the user community, or they might have organically been backlog enhancements identified during the build phase based on client feedback. I just want to talk a little bit about survey. So survey is such a broad spectrum these days of applications, devices, technology, projections. I wanted to touch on how we're using it and how we are looking to integrate it into our existing workflows. So capturing data, having access to things like LIDAR and photogrammetry gives us the timeliness of insights so we can capture one day and three days later, be able to understand what has happened on site and trends over time, things like volumetrics, but also potentially any geology to use out on site. So it also has the ability to go back in time and um, from that find trends and hopefully predict future outcomes on the project. Our aim is to bring it to the same maturity level as our GIS applications that we're developing on the project which is really exciting. I can't wait to see how we can use the data and generate insights from it with inside different applications. As well, survey for this project lowers our, our risks. So if there's any issues that we didn't see that occurred a couple of years ago, we can wind back time and see what was happening out on site through LIDAR and photogrammetry. So I just really wanted to share the little bit about what we're starting to do and um, develop more on Snowy 2.0. Awesome, thanks Nick. Thanks for sharing those insights and 
there's a lot of themes throughout today's session around the use and reuse of the existing technology you have, as well as the associated content, both within our traditional GIS kind of cohort and further afield, such as those CAD, BIM, survey and communication examples. You mentioned, Nick, that finding information is often a difficulty or challenge on projects. Do you want to describe what's next for yourselves on 2.0? And maybe if we start with that first example of linking data, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Working on Snowy 2.0, we have access to so much information, whether it be you know, engineering documents, BIM models, GIS, survey, lifetime, tracking information, all that type of stuff. But one of the biggest challenges, but also opportunities is being able to link all that data and information, and whether it be for now on the project as we're constructing it, but also looking at linking it for the future. So a lot of things that we develop on the project or we capture data on, on the project, whether it be about the actual tunnel, the segments, the geology, how the actual roads were developed, the type of cement, all that information, really looking at how we can link all that data and information into our 3D model. To give you an example of the level of detail that we are trying to achieve on this project with inside the power station, it'll be LED 500. So how does an organization like Sony Hydro link all of that information to a physical feature inside the BIM model? So it's really exciting to start to look at that type of technical innovation. Well done on the journey you and the team are on on the project. We've seen today a lot of the kind of front end components that make up the design, but also some of those contextual insights like geology you described, which inform the designs both above and below ground. We've seen patterns today of bringing kind of a heartbeat to the project. And you've mentioned the timeliness of the survey capture and how that can offer insights around things that change. Can you just share with us this mention of live time tracking, we can see what's coming out of TPC TunnelSoft on the TBM through the telemetry and the dashboards are bringing great insights to stakeholders, but what's next as far as IoT in real time for Snowy 2.0? On Snowy 2.0, we are using a lot of different types of sensors, especially to track a lot of the environmental considerations that we need to use on the project. And I guess it is important to be able to track lifetime what things are happening, but also to collate information over time as well, so that we can actually have access to insights relatively quickly. And a lot of the environmental lifetime tracking, it's actually a trend that we're, we're after. So we're using a lot of things that are giving us that information lifetime, but it's also giving us a library of information that we can tap back into if issues arise in the future. Thanks, Nick. So as you've outlined, the scheme in Snowy 2 operates um, in an area where you have multiple other entities, be it utilities, local governments and, and the like. So, you know, that collaboration theme and being able to get that view is, is definitely resonating, no doubt, with the audience we have today. The next is kind of, you've mentioned the majority of this project is underground. The dilemmas of finding your location underground is an interesting one. Can you share, are you looking to maybe use some of the content you've received, the GIS CAN and BIM, in an O&M sense? And have you been thinking about this all along? Is it front of mind or has it come on the back of receiving the kind of planned design phase? This project, Snow 2.0, is predominantly underground. So we have to think in underground way of thinking. Also, beyond construction, Snowy Hydro will be managing this asset for the next 100, 150 years. So we always have to look at how do we, number one, get Snowy 2 built, but also how can we manage this asset in the future? So I'm always thinking about the future. How can I make it easier for our asset managers and operations teams to manage this asset? And especially this asset being, you know, 800 meters underground, how do we make sure we know where they are, but also where the assets are underground? So definitely looking at how to better use underground GIS and survey for the project now, but also into the future. I think that's a good place to kind of conclude, if we will, Nick, and I think we've agreed on this, that 
we've heard a lot of discourse and you know we can learn a lot of lessons from the past and we've seen examples of the analog twins from the original snowy scheme today and as we hear notions of digital twins and you know digital and technology has been a great enabler not just on snowy 2 as we've seen today but other projects and infrastructure underway across australia there is this need to kind of offer the heartbeat to how the project is performing so that we can ask and answer those really challenging questions of our time and this is how we've come up with a term known as living twins which we're describing as an intelligent representation of the real world intelligent is a hint to the iot and the sense of nature that um, a lot of our projects have as a capability today but importantly they are interconnected they aren't in situ they collaborate with other agencies and other organizations in the areas where they operate as uh, nick's alluded to they also need to offer us up resilience to change and responsive to change be it faced with weather events or restrictions in light of covid they must always be that heartbeat of what's happening day to day and we need to be able to scale these across not just the scheme but more broadly across the nation and nick can you give us a feel for the kind of mantra or the, the focus areas of, of the project going forward for the future thank you seth so using a quote from our ceo managing director paul broad and it's about the way that we've always talked about snowy hydro so we've always talked about it in the terms of the past but now we're about the, the the now and the future so what really motivates me in my role on the project but also with all things geospatial digital and survey is how do we make sure we ensure what we're doing now can provide value for the future so this asset has a life cycle of 100 to 150 years how do i as the digital lead on snowy 2.0 make sure that people that will be managing this asset have a really good digital data information framework around them open framework but things that can help them manage this asset that we're building in 2022 so that's what motivates me that's what's driving me for delivering these outcomes from snowy 2.0 this is on the left hand side, the QR code for the Snowy 2.0 virtual tour that you can access and share to your friends and family. And um, always, if anyone's got any feedback on it, I'm always willing to um, listen and take it on so I can develop it even further because this tool and application isn't for me or the technical people on Snowy 2.0, it's for, for the community. So always eager to hear what people think. Thank you, Nick. And likewise, if you want to know more behind the scenes, technically, uh, reach out to myself and Ezra Australia more broadly. And we've curated a bunch of additional resources relevant to today's topic, including BIT, BIM and GIS kind of integration patterns that may be of interest to you. So I encourage you to scan the QR codes on screen right now. Without any further ado, thank you very much for your attention.